I'm gonna say it. Some of y'all been getting a little too comfortable at these corporate holiday parties. So this is my 11th train. Just go for an hour. You don't have to stay for long. Show up. The goal is to be a little looser than you are at work, but still maintain your professionalism. That this is a work function. Now, what does that mean? That means no taking. <laughs> No, not right. What is the most disturbing thing you have ever experienced or witnessed in your workplace? 100% next day these people get fired. The insanity unfolding around you is like something out of a nightmare. Two girls scream and flail around the middle of the room like lunatics. One girl yells about being too hot as she rips off her clothes and runs out into the street. Another girl lies face down on the floor completely motionless, apart from one finger tapping on the floor. And the fifth girl is helped to the bathroom by a manager, only to fall against the door, smearing vomit all over its surface. If you had known this would happen, you would have never shared with them, no matter how many times they would have asked. The next day at work, an email is sent out about appropriate behavior at office parties. One by one, every employee has been brought into the meeting room for questioning. And you're next. It's those few weeks before the holiday break, and almost everyone is in the festive spirit. With adorable door and hallway decorations made to look like a gingerbread village, work desks turned into Whoville and the Polar Express train, or the stunning gingerbread houses colleagues have come together to build, there's always something fun to expect at work. But when office party season rolls around, you're not quite sure what to expect. Whether it's a live choir hired to sing in a Zoom call for the work at home folks. I had Amelia book Gabby's choir to sing some carols for us. You know there's a lag on Zoom so they won't be in sync. Hi, welcome! The group dances forced upon you. Christmas games that get you a little too close to your coworkers. <laughs> or embarrassing yourself to get that Christmas bonus. But nothing tops those few colleagues that take things too far. Whatever happens. I have to make sure you don't do anything stupid. I can't make you that promise. And I don't care. And it's these few colleagues that prompt the manager's yearly reminder. You just do not need to repeat a last year. No, not naming any names. This is a work function. Now, what does that mean? That means no taking. No fighting! Company policies still apply. Just a reminder to all those in relationships. It's not okay to kiss your coworker under the mistletoe at the Christmas party. Of course, not everyone listens. This is my first drink. This is my first drink. And this is my first drink. Especially when lots of alcohol is supplied. From one bottle to two bottles. My, na my name is April, and this is my fourth glass of wine. Hey. From two bottles. And this might be my last drink. And it didn't end. This is my 11th drink. Pair that with impulsivity and low self-control, the night can only come with surprises that range from embarrassing to life-threatening. So. Should people be held accountable for their behavior at holiday work functions? Or should that which happens at the office Christmas party stay at the office Christmas party? Let's get into it. Let's start off with the ultimate holiday office party from hell, and likely the craziest Taco Bell story you've ever heard. The event and its aftermath were so devastating, one employee filed a lawsuit nearly a year later in November 2023. That would be Alana Bichium, a cashier at a Taco Bell in San Pedro, California at the time. It all started when Alana was invited by her supervisor, Lydia, and was told to bring a dish for the potluck. So, on the night of December 18th, 2022, Alana arrived at the Taco Bell with her sister and her significant other in tow, along with a bowl of her homemade guacamole. That's the first time any good guacamole has been in a Taco Bell. Upon her arrival, the scene was immediately unsettling. Lydia had covered the windows of the restaurant with wrapping paper, as well as the cameras for the lobby in the inside of the restaurant. Sounds like a party to me. Well, not to Alana, because she said that she was triggered by that, okay? Nonetheless, Alana dropped her guacamole off at the designated potluck table and went about the night. Throughout the party, she noticed many of her coworkers were overserved alcohol. But it wasn't until after stepping back inside from mingling outside that Alana was met with the debauchery that awaited her. The night reportedly descended into chaos with alcohol-fueled escapades that were enough to leave anyone speechless. Around midnight, 
Alana witnessed her co-worker Jay getting intimate with his wife in front of everyone at the party. But that wasn't the most shocking part of the already disturbing scene. Amidst the act, Jay's wife was also kissing both Lydia and another co-worker, who we will call A. Alana was so shocked, disgusted, and outraged by what she witnessed that she ran back outside. Moments later, she noticed Jay exiting the restaurant, so she assumed it was safe to head back in to get her guacamole bowl before leaving. But the party wasn't finished serving up surprises, because when Alana returned indoors, she found both Lydia and A throwing up. And to her horror, the guacamole bowl had become a casualty, with one woman using the bowl and another using the trash bin. Despite the unsightly scene, Alana decided to confront Lydia about the party, and it was during this conversation that A threatened to throw hands at Alana. Alana quickly de-escalated the situation so no fight occurred, and the night finally came to an end. Of course, after a party so chaotic, there was more brewing. Things weren't sitting right with Alana, so within the next three days, Alana filed a complaint with HR and filed a report to the Colorado-based Alvarado Restaurant Group, the franchisee that owns and operates the Taco Bell in question. This prompted an investigation and the three involved in the incident, Lydia, Jay, and A, were immediately fired. Unfortunately for Alana, the nightmare didn't end when the party did, or even after the termination of her co-workers. The following day, on December 22nd, Alana was met with what seemed to be the retaliation. In the middle of the night, someone allegedly associated with her co-workers smashed the rear left window of her vehicle, which was parked in the driveway of her home. Alana filed a report with the LAPD, and though that was the height of any physical damage to Alana or her property, it was still only the beginning. Because what followed was a barrage of text messages from remaining Taco Bell co-workers. In one of these texts, a female co-worker allegedly said, Baby girl, I want to mess up your face. I don't give a fuck about your car. Following the incident involving her vehicle. The same employee also added, You've been running your mouth for the longest, so run them hands, and in a slew of other texts from a male co-worker, Alana was allegedly called a stupid and f***ed up, fat as f and a snitch n-word. He also wrote, and I get fired, oh boy, I'm a f you peoples up, adding, I don't give a f And after she informed him that she'd let the police know of his threatening messages, his response was, you think I'm scared of police? The same man also seemed to aim his frustrations at people in her personal life, writing, don't let me catch your boyfriend T or a baby daddy M. I'm a hurt N-words, cause you hurt my pockets. Alana took this as a direct threat to her and her loved ones and brought them to the attention of Taco Bell and the owner company of the franchise. She also sent them a copy of the police report she filed after the attack on her car. At the time, neither Taco Bell nor the franchisee did anything to hold the employees responsible. And in a stranger twist, Alana would be the one facing the consequences. She was transferred to another Taco Bell location, something Alana was not on board with. The stress related to the event, including and following the party, coupled with the hostile work environment allegedly caused Alana to become both physically and mentally sick. And as a result, she felt she had no other choice but to leave her position at Taco Bell altogether. In the lawsuit, officially filed on November 15th with the Los Angeles Superior Court, Alana is seeking damages for an unspecified amount for the hostile work environment during and after the party, leading to her resignation. She is also looking to have a trial by jury for the case. The lawsuit names Alvarado Restaurant Group, the Taco Bell Corporation, Lydia, Alana's former supervisor, as defendants, along with 50 other unnamed individuals that were present that night. The moral of the story is don't go to the Taco Bell Christmas party uh, unless you're into that sort of thing. Many people had mixed reactions to the situation. I would expect nothing less from Taco Bell. She was shocked, disgusted, and outraged, causing her to flee the restaurant, yet she went back for her guacamole? And some seemed to think the party sounded like a fun time. Taco Bell holiday party is lit. Note to self, somehow get invited to a Taco Bell holiday party. This accurately describes my idea of a Taco Bell holiday party. Some people even thought Alana broke an unspoken rule. Because Alana Betchum, allegedly for educational purposes only, has done messed up the Taco Bell company holiday parties for all of us from here on out. Now somebody done messed the hell up and invited her to the work Christmas party. In fact, a New York Post reader thought enough was done for Alana, writing, Why is she suing Taco Bell? They fired the employees and transferred her to another location once she told them about the threats. They did all they could legally do. 
why didn't she contact law enforcement? I'm sympathetic to her situation, but what else did she expect Taco Bell to do? She should just find herself another job. Another thought the solution was as simple as leaving the party, but some had theories about why it escalated so far, calling it a money grab by targeting a wealthy organization. It's also possible Alana just wanted her guacamole bowl back, leading her back inside the party for the second time. As for the mess in the bowl, one person's theory seemed to imply it wasn't personal, but rather easy to mistake guac for vomit. Taco Bell has yet to publicly comment on Alana's allegations. But it appears Lydia isn't the first authority figure to let alcohol get the best of them. Take this story, for example. A Redditor's former manager used to work at the new company they applied for, and she was known for her chaotic behavior at the company's first Christmas party. So chaotic that the Redditor was told the cautionary tale during their interview. At this holiday work party, alcohol was served and she allegedly became very intoxicated and animated. She seemingly lost all sense of restraint and made a declaration to her boss that no one saw coming. Tells the boss she wants to sleep with him and knows he feels the same, in front of his wife. But that's not all. She allegedly continued to harass her new boss, who happened to be a recovering alcoholic and sober for 20 years, even adding, he's not actually in recovery, and he'd have to be drunk to sleep with his wife. She never came into work after that, according to the Redditor. While not everyone crosses boundaries, holiday office parties do tend to have a bad rep for married couples gone wrong situations. TikToker Allison recalled one of the employees didn't want to participate during a Christmas work party and proceeded to go up to the bar upstairs and got wasted while we all did the event. When the night progressed, the rest of the staff joined this now intoxicated coworker upstairs for drinks and appetizers and an award ceremony hosted by the head of HR. Best improved, best attitude at the company, you know, things like that. It was then that things took a turn. This guy who got wasted got an award, walked up, grabbed the award out of this woman's hand, open mouth kissed her and dipped her to the floor and brought her back up and sauntered back to his chair, looking pleased as ever. But it gets worse. These people were both married, by the way, to other people. She was mortified. He was proud of himself. I, I was... Allison revealed he still kept his job at the company afterwards. By now, you've probably noticed the theme. With alcohol and secret crushes within arm's reach comes scandalous behavior. But for some, having a crush isn't necessary any person will do. In an unforgettable holiday work party when this Redditor was 19 years old, they recalled a female colleague getting intoxicated after two drinks and losing all sense of control. She was grabbing dicks and forcing guys' hands into her bra and stuff. And then the colleague stood on top of the bar, shouting the most jaw-dropping request, form an orderly queue and I'll f you all. With quickness, a manager bravely walked forward. You can see where this goes wrong. He wanted to stop the employee, but she mistook the manager as her first candidate, shouting, Would have expected you to be the first in line. All while sitting on the bar and lifting her skirt, revealing no undergarments. The bar staff were forced to remove her from the premises, and a call was made to a nearby taxi for a ride home. The twist? The cab driver refused to take her as she'd been banned for improper conduct with their other drivers in past trips. The original poster claimed they had to take her home, adding, I made sure I took two female colleagues with me and the mad woman sat in the back away from me. The Redditor revealed his colleague quit not long after that. But sometimes, office party mishaps are caused by seemingly innocent actions. Like the time one worker swung their arms up in the air with a beer in hand, accidentally spilling beer onto a colleague's clothes, but more shockingly made contact with her mouth, chipping her tooth. Or the time-old classic where the intoxicated employee complains about the boss to the boss without realizing. But one mishap managed to reach upper management and captured hundreds of upvotes on Reddit. The mistake? It was all over some homemade sweets. See. This Redditor brought joints and candies infused with substances to substance-friendly colleagues, but it accidentally got in the hands of a few younger girls who never tried it before. And although they only had a small amount, they lived to regret their decision. Picture this. One girl projectile vomiting in the corner of the room and later, unable to make it fully to the toilet bowl, smears vomit on the bathroom door which almost knocked her out. Another girl face planted on the floor motionless, aside from one finger tapping the floor. Another girl, suddenly feeling hot flashes, ran out into the street, exposing her top undergarment to cool down. Two other girls were dancing intensively and singing as loud as the music. The managers present at the party, scared the girls had been spiked, asked one of the girls what she consumed. From laughter to shaking, then crying, she responded, My mom will end me. By the following morning, news got to upper management and employees were called in for interrogation, one by one. 
None dared to expose the source, so instead, a stern email was sent along the lines of not bringing outside issues to work events and next time there will be serious consequences. But perhaps the most innocent act gone wrong is bringing your beloved family member to a work outing. This Redditor recalled the night their boss brought their 16-year-old daughter to the office holiday party. You're probably thinking, no, that couldn't possibly be the case. It definitely was the case, according to the original poster. The daughter disappeared and slept with two of the apprentices who work in admin, both in their 30s. While shocking to many because most locations have an AOC of 18, there are still some locations permitting 16 and younger. Despite the law, many people consider adult-child relations controversial due to a teen's underdeveloped rational thinking skills. While further details were not provided, we can only imagine how regretful the father felt. But, as evidenced in this next story, sometimes it's not about what happens at the parties, but what happens after. Some people leave the party with an HR email the morning after requesting for an immediate meeting regarding their Christmas party behavior. Others quit their job on their own out of embarrassment for soiling their pants at the office party. And some people have to live with the haunting fact that their embarrassing moment was immortalized in a video. But one TikToker embarrassed herself during the trip back home, which is a stark reminder to prepare your getaway strategy carefully. Just Call Me Ellie, or Ellie, underestimated her alcohol tolerance after taking a break from drinking during the year, ultimately causing herself to black out at the office party. I've ended up in the bathroom being sick. I was in there for like 45 minutes. I don't, I don't remember any of this, right? She tried to return home, but ended up at the wrong house and tried to unlock the door with her keys. When that didn't work, Ellie, started banging on the door like a police officer. They've opened the door and I have walked into this house like not even realizing it's not my house. After a few steps inside, realizing it wasn't her house, Ellie apologized and was escorted to her home, still in her drunken state. Had it been a stranger's home, Ellie could have been in danger. But luckily, these were her neighbors that she grew up with. By now, you're probably thinking, office parties are just like other parties, only there's a chance you can get fired for risky behavior and you have to go back to your best work behavior the following shift. Knowing the potential consequences, do you really have to go to them? The answer is no, you don't have to go, but you should. Whether you simply like to keep work matters at work, it's not an enjoyable experience for me and I don't like any of you, or are naturally a homebody, one thing about me, I will sit in my house all day. Sometimes, the reason for holiday work parties are wholesome. The only reason that they even have holiday parties, it's to show their appreciation for their employees. And if you're up for it, maybe they deserve some of your time. So just go for an hour, you don't have to stay for long. Whether you're there to build connections, just there for the drama, it's time! or genuinely enjoy all festive activities, sometimes office parties can still be miserable. And if there's an open bar, when there's like a limited bar, people lose their head, heads gone. It's safe to say, just do everything the opposite of what the defendants in Alanis Taco Bell holiday party did. People with literally wives at home, kids doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. After all, you can't escape the consequences of the morning after, as TikToker Adam explained. Don't lose your marbles, yeah? Hold, hold it a bit together, okay? Because the next day it will come. There'll be video proof. There'll be word of mouth. Your reputation finished. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy some drinks. TikTokers A Dakota 2 and Selena Rezvani shared some pointers. If you drink alcohol, go easy. Let me all right off the bat, one too many, one too many. The saying is, drink the first, sip the second, and skip the third. The goal is to be a little looser than you are at work, but still maintain your professionalism. And remember, 90 minutes is a magic number to stick around, circulate, and then be on your way. Besides, if you're not feeling it or things go haywire, no one will stop you from leaving earlier. So, if you're attending any holiday parties this festive season, don't forget to drink responsibly and plan a designated driver. And the moral of the story is, guys, don't get too drunk at your Christmas party. Stay safe and have a happy holiday.